Hey, it's me, Tanner. In this video, I'm going to show you how to take a stock Power Wheels like this and transform it into something that has a little bit more get up and go. Let's go. I got this car from my nephews. As you can tell, it's been well loved and they've changed out the front tires. But other than that, this car is completely stock. But the battery stopped working, the paint's fading, and the seatbelts are totally disintegrated. Which all means this is the perfect candidate for an overhaul. And like every good car project, this one has to start by taking the whole thing apart. Once the car's apart, I'm going to cut the wiring which connects to the old battery. First disconnect the connector from the old battery and then snip away. Now that I've done this, I'm committed. This connector and battery go together and since the battery is a goner, I'll be disposing of both of them. If you do this with yours, be sure to dispose of your battery properly. With the battery removed and the connector snipped, this is what you were left with. A big empty hole under the hood to put all the new components in. We'll be using the black and white wire to connect to in just a minute, so I've gone ahead and stripped the ends of it. If we follow the wire, it leads to the connector for the pedal. And from there, the wiring goes back to the shifter to control the car's direction and speed. The rest of the wires from there go back to the motors. Here are the parts I'm going to use for the upgrade. One of my power tool batteries, a connector or adapter for the battery. This is specific to my brand and it's 3D printed to fit. 30 amp fuse and a power switch, some heat shrink tubing and spade connectors, a motor controller, these wire clips for connecting wires together, and some extra wire to position the components wherever you want or need them. I'll start adding parts back in by first locating the battery terminal where I want it. In this case, right in the front middle where I can screw it in and it can easily be accessed to swap it out with a freshly charged battery. From there, I'll attach a 30 amp fuse to the positive wire coming from the battery. This fuse is important to protect the other components on the car from burning up with too much current. You can try to use a different size fuse, but understand a lowered amperage rating means you'll likely burn out the fuse more often and need to replace it, while a higher one may lead to permanent damage on your motor controller or the motors themselves. I'm using these awesome clip connectors to connect all my wiring. I'll put a link for these and some of the other parts I'm using below. I'm using these because they allow me to easily connect and disconnect wires quickly and I can try different configurations if I want to. They're not waterproof, so using them outside for a permanent solution may not be the right thing for you. We don't get much rain in Arizona, except for a day like today, so I'm not too worried about long-term use. Next, I'll add a length of wire to go between my fuse and power switch so I can mount the switch on the dashboard. For the main power switch, I'm going to use this simple rocker style switch. The incoming power from the fuse is connected to the middle terminal, the brass color terminal on the right is my ground, and the terminal on the left is my output power when the switch is on. Be sure to check your switch if the terminals differ. To make this connection easy, I'm going to use spay connectors to connect the wires to the switch terminals. Next is the motor controller. I'm going to connect the output from the switch to the positive power input terminal and the ground from the switch and battery to the negative power input terminal. I'll then connect the white and black wire from the car to the output motor terminals. The white and black wires which are already on the car will connect to the motor output side with the white wire going to the positive motor output terminal and the black wire going to the negative motor output terminal. Finish wiring this all up and it's good to go. Okay, now that I've got all my wiring hooked up, my switch in place, my fuse, and my PWM, uh, or my motor controller, I'm gonna go ahead and put the battery in and we're gonna test it out. Okay, so lights off here, lights off here. Lights on here. I don't see a light on. Uh, maybe I do. I don't know. We're going to try it. It's time for pedal. Okay, so I don't like how that's working. I'm gonna take it apart and see if I can make maybe a different connection here. Okay, so I should probably explain something here. What I was mumbling about under my breath was how I wasn't liking just how slow the wheels seemed to be turning when I first tested this. The whole point of this upgrade was to get the wheels going faster. I thought maybe it could be the switch or the motor controller. So after spending a good 10 minutes taking everything apart, double checking my wiring, and then putting it all back together again, 
It was about this point when I realized that I left the shifter in reverse, which makes the wheels go backwards and slower. Put it in forward on high gear and voila, first try. I took the opportunity here to take care of a little wire management and to secure a few of these components with some hot glue. Okay, it's time to put it back together. Life is a winding road no telling where it goes Driving through days and nights Won't stop for traffic lights Here's a brief overview of how the system will work now. On the dash, I have the new power button. It turns the power on and off to the whole car. Under the hood, I've got the slot for a 20 volt battery, then the fuse and the motor controller with the knob accessible. The purpose of the motor controller is to control the amount of voltage going to the wheels. In general, the higher the voltage, the faster the motors go. I'll simply rotate the knob to the point where I'm okay with the speed for my kids to drive at, and then I'll leave it there. With everything buttoned up, there's only one thing left to do. I just had a little break of the rain, so I'm gonna give it a test drive. Turn this thing on. Well, there you have it. Pretty simple upgrade, giving the power wheels a little bit more power. Overall, this modification is really pretty straightforward. Now, my goal was just to get this ready so my boys could drive it right now. I've got a few more upgrades planned for this particular car, so stay tuned for a future video where I'll cover some of those. For now, I've got to get this home so my kids can enjoy it. Thanks a ton for watching. Try not to